So, now what we're concerned about here is how do we think about types of economics that exist? Well, you already know one of them. And the one distinction that we see here is one of microeconomics versus macroeconomics. And in this class, um, basically by the title of the course, we can see that we're going to be dealing with um, macroeconomics. Sorry about my spelling here. You got the idea here, though. Macroeconomics. And in macroeconomics, we are looking at the economy as a whole. We're going to look at the entire country. And we oftentimes will focus on things like how to measure production, how to measure prices, and how to measure unemployment. And those are all things that are basically affecting the economy or the country as a whole. Hence the first part of this, which is macro. In the Econ 130 course, you'll deal with um, microeconomics. And this would be how individual firms and consumers make decisions. And again, in this course, we're going to be dealing with macroeconomics. Now, we could also look at this as economists having to be looked at in terms of whether they do positive or normative economics. Now, normative basically becomes something of how things ought to be. It's a value judgment. So an example of that would be something like um, I think that unemployment is too high, or I think things cost too much. You can hear in both of those statements that you can't really test the statement, because how could you test whether something is too high or whether something is too low? Because that's my opinion. In a positive statement, these are testable facts. It's either true or not. Right? And you can create a test. So if I tell you that the unemployment rate is 8.6%, well, that is either true or false. In this class, we'll be primarily dealing with positive economic statements, primarily because you shouldn't care very much what my personal opinions are. You should care about learning the facts of this course. That doesn't mean that you can't have opinions. <coughs> We're just saying that those opinions should be informed by something. Then, we can deal with a difference between someone doing neoclassical Okay, I'm not sure if it recorded this or not. Uh, here's our neoclassical. So again, for neoclassical, these are going to be individuals who um, are interest. Mm, let's change this. happiness-seeking individuals. Versus heterodox. And these, again, for heterodox, these would be people who are, for instance, 
Marxist. So Marxist, what distinguishes a Marxist from others is that a Marxist thinks that there's always class conflict in the world, and that those who own the means of production always want to, um, those who own the means of production always want to control or enslave the working class. So that's a particular paradigm, meaning it's a particular view of the world. Now, neoclassical is also a certain kind of paradigm. Institutionalists, they see institutions as um, guiding how economics, how economies organize themselves and how they allocate things. Feminists think that there is a male bias um, in how things are allocated or measured and that that then hurts um, women. Now, in this class, this isn't me making a political choice here, um, but in this class, we're going to focus primarily on the neoclassical, and more specifically for this class, we're going to focus on something called the neoclassical Keynesian synthesis, which is, what, 95% of undergraduate students learn. So it's not really me saying, I, be I believe that, I mean, I do believe this, but I'm not choosing it just because I believe it. Rather, we're choosing it because it's what most textbooks are organized around. It's what most students learn. Now, it doesn't mean that it's fail-proof and that there aren't some elements of truth in these other theories, but um, even if you were to take a Marxist course, obviously it's then not dealing with um, the other points of view. So we have to make some choices here. And in this class, we're going to be focusing on the neoclassical Keynesian synthesis. Um, and then if we think about, um, you know, other kinds of differences between economists, um, we can see other differences. We can see those who... Um, primarily are quantitative and data-driven versus those who try to use, um, sorry, not qualitative, quantitative versus those who are more qualitative and historical-based. And um, in this class, we're going to kind of deal with the quantitative data-driven approach.